send it of himself to people who do not appropriate their hearts to steward it. The first thing, and it may be a no-brainer to many of you, but the first thing that must be done to prepare for revival is this. Every single sin must be confessed to God. Every single sin needs to be dealt with before our God. 1 John 1 9 is a scripture that's often quoted in salvation messages or when evangelists give an altar call for salvation. And 1 John 1 9 says this that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But John in 1 John 1 9 is not writing to the unbeliever, he is writing to the believer. And do you know that there is, because I heard it for years growing up in the Baptist church. You, once you get saved, you don't have to confess your sin anymore. Then why is 1 John 1, 9 there? Why is John writing to believers if once you're saved, you no longer need to confess your sin anymore? I can tell you why. Because God will not pour out His Spirit to a people who are willing to deal with the secret stuff in their lives. I don't remember which revival it was. It was interesting. I was hearing it in my ear. And then Sister Mona came up to me and said, it's time to get the sin out. Do you remember that? I think we talked. And then I, saw it, and I said, well, it's time to get the sin out. I'm like, oh, yeah. No. no. What the Lord is wanting us to do is to examine our heart and deal with the stuff we don't want anybody else to know about. Amen. Hear me. You wave your hand. Give the Lord a praise. Come on. I'll do it too, y'all. I just did it in front of y'all. I was watching some of uh, the video that I've been recording our services, and they, I mean, some people started bouncing, and all of a sudden I saw my bald head go across like this. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm going to bury my pride. I'm going to put it on YouTube anyway. <laughs> they already laughing at me, anyhow. But here's the deal. We can do all this stuff. I can still preach good. And not deal with sin. I can lead people to Jesus. I can go to Africa and preach crusade. And see hundreds of people come to Jesus. But can I tell you. A real move of God. Will not happen until we confess every sin to God. Amen. I used to tell the guys at Teen Challenge, while you're here, leave no stone unturned. <laughs> we like to leave, we don't like stones being turned over. But when, but see, do you not know that you yourself are a temple yes. of the Holy Spirit. And guess what? If you want Jesus to come into his house and he don't see it in the order that he wants to see, what happens is he wants to begin to turn over tables. And the reason why we don't really want a true move of God because we know that God will really have to deal with all that sin we got piled up on those tables and making it look good, making it look like God's really doing something. But when he really steps in, he starts dealing with it. We don't want him overturning up. We don't want him upsetting our lives. It's not in my notes, y'all. Y'all take that one for free. Listen to me. In your secret place. I'm not talking about let the devil beat you up and let there be condemnation. But you get honest with God. You let there be transparent. Let there be truth. As David said, David who sinned with Bathsheba, he said, God, you desire truth in the inward parts. You desire truth, transparency in the innermost being. You get under that microscope of God and let him deal with even the small foxes which are spoiling 
the vine and keeping you from being fruitful. Every sin must be confessed to God. The book of Acts puts it this way. Repent that times of refreshing come on. Yes. may come from the presence of the Lord. Yes. Number two.